Welcome AJP students uh, to our SAT class and this video is over the introduction and overview of the new SAT. Um, in this video we'll be going over a number of different things but more so just to sort of orient you to um, the formatting of the, uh, of the SAT. Um, we'll also talk about the student score report, these things in which you will receive after each test and will be a very analytical in nature and helping to break down not just the different sections in which you of the test but the individual types of questions that are involved with those different sections and helping you better understand um, how to sort of prepare and move forward. <clears throat> we'll also talk about other preparation and resources in which at your disposal to help to further supplement and improve your test prep efforts. Also we'll talk about the key changes with the new SAT um, since it's unveiling in October of last year with the PSAT and then this year in, in the uh, month of March. Also we'll talk a little bit about the new SAT versus the old SAT and just kind of recapping those changes. Also the structure of the, t of the test and helping you understand its formatting. <coughs> Scoring that's involved as well as the PSAT and National Merit Scholar Scholarship qualifying test and the scores that are needed potentially to receive such awards. And then lastly pacing strategies. Um, to help you sort of navigate the test in a more confident manner. <coughs> so in your student score report, you'll have overall scores that will be given to you and then also section raw scores. Um, these will be broken down uh, in regards to like the math and the reading and the written language uh, and that way you can better understand the progress that's being developed in those areas. Uh, additionally as well, that you'll also be able to see um, the individual types of problems. So for instance, in the heart of algebra, you will be able to see how well you're progressing with algebraic expressions and linear equations and function problems and things. So when we're studying and when you're studying moving forward, you can kind of better understand like, okay, these are the areas that I continue to have struggles with. This is how I can spend and utilize my time. These are the sort of things in which I need to review further. So it's really to help you um, be more targeted in your approach to the test and that you're allocating your time, which is very precious, to the areas that you most need it to, and to study for. Um, and also helping you uh, to develop a plan as you sort of prepare and continually work on improving in certain areas of the test. <coughs> um, so with that, you know, preparation beyond, you know, as we get your test, we want you to be able to analyze your student score report. Um, and with that, we'll certainly give you some comments, some feedback, um, give you some guidance to that. Um, but most importantly, you can kind of visually see the weaknesses in which you have and then that where we can sort of allocate that time to. We also suggest that you review your missed problems after each practice test, being able to go, <coughs> go back, review it, kind of diagnose in a sense of understanding the type of problem that it is and then with understanding the type of problem and what it is, understanding where that sort of information is located within the curriculum and things. And, and being able to go back, look at it, review it, um, and if there's problems that exist within, a, in a, in a, in a, consistent within an area, devising a plan of attack to sort of work on building competencies within that area. Um, additionally, beyond that, we're gonna be giving you homework. Um, and with the homework, uh, there's a, gonna be a number of problems that are gonna be asked of you um, certainly we like for you to do that at your pace and try to work on completing those um, uh, in a timely manner and things, but it's really helpful to sort of supplement um, what's being taught in the classroom, but not just what's being taught there to reinforce the strategies, reinforce the content, also reinforce the notion that these are the types of problems in which I'm working on. This is something I can become more of a recognition of and then understanding the recognition of that type of problem, understanding the sort of strategies in which you need to implement to solve that problem. So um, more than anything, we want students to be able to uh, understand when they're looking at a certain type of problem that they say, okay, this is the type, um, this is a, uh, you know, a, a, a advanced equation type of problem which I'm looking at. I'm having to divide this polynomial. I understand this. I understand the sort of things in which I need to do to execute that. Other additional resources in which we have uh, the College Board, um, 
the blue book, you know, certainly what we have is PDFs of those and is a practice test key and answer explanations and things. So we'll be giving that back to you after each test and that will certainly be able to use um, to understand and review missed problems and things. And you can also look and see as to which problems in which you may be answered correctly and, and understand the explanation of that. Uh, additionally, I like to suggest the daily practice for the new SAT. Um, it's a nice app. Um, that you can download to your uh, your Apple phone, your iPhone, to your to your Android or whatever it may be, and with that you can spend three, four, five minutes at the very most answering a problem each and every day of the of, of the week, um, and and trying to further uh, improve your uh, test skills. And and the nice thing about it is you should have an account already registered with College Board. It'll keep up and track all that, and you can see how you're progressing in certain areas and things. <clears throat> so with the new SAT, um, and some information beyond that, is College Board formed in, in 1900, and it was developed as an interest exam for colleges so that they could have uh, some sort of standardization of understanding w what students knew at the time. And really that's what it's all been about is just trying to standardize the field and have some sort of form of a, of a measured test <coughs> that they could compare each and every student to and things. Um, what it also measures and what the test does today is it's is been uh, formatted a bit differently as many people would say in the past it was more logic oriented and it certainly, does has, has, certainly still has an element of that to it but uh, it's more about knowledge you learned in high school. Uh, more achievement oriented, it kind of more matchly aligns itself with the ACT and, and sort of the things in which the concepts and skills they're testing. Um, and then it's also <clears throat> measuring skills in which you need to succeed in college and things. Um, and, and with the SAT, it's not meant to predict um, the college success of all four years but really to predict the sort of success that a student may have upon entry of their freshman year. So this has already happened in the past. You can see the PSAT was launched last October and I believe many of y'all have taken that already. Um, and then I always encourage students to take the PSAT um, as often as which they can before they start actually taking the um, SAT. And then the SAT launched this past March uh, 2016 and there's been um, three different um, uh, test and versions of that administered for this year so far. <clears throat> so eight key changes, vocabulary words. In the past it had all these really obscure words that were involved in it um, that had these uh, sort of set of questions that really tested your knowledge of the vocabulary. Well that's been eliminated and um, what they're really wanting to understand is how well can you read words within context and you know that words they're giving and are having multiple meanings, how well can you decipher um, that word and understand this is how it's, this should be used in this context. <coughs> um, interpretation and use of evidence, so it really tests your comprehension of your reading skills and being able to analyze passages of things, also being able to um, understanding the evidence that lies within it and being able to use it to, um, you know, to answer questions. The essay is optional now. In the past, it was uh, something that was mandatory and was given as the uh, first section of the test. Now it's the last section of the test. Um, usually the prompt is pretty constant in what they're asking for. Um, and the text is provided. So now that there's a passage that's probably um, about 750, 1,000 words long um, given to you to sort of read and, and to analyze. Um, <coughs> Also, there's three primary math topics. So there's the problem solving, data analysis, uh, ratios, proportion, percentages, um, uh, make up a large bulk of that. And um, you know, there's a lot of other concepts that have been eliminated <coughs> you know, from the previous test. Uh, also, heart of algebra, linear equations is um, quite uh, prevalent within the test and things. Um, passport to Advanced Math, the complex equations and functions uh, that are being asked of students to complete. Um, but uh, the geometry has been de-emphasized to a large extent where it's only maybe four questions of the 56 uh, that are involved in the test. <coughs> 
So uh, a lot of some other changes to that is real world scenarios. They try to include things that you would uh, potentially, um, you know, encounter uh, within the real world, and you know they sort of integrated that into uh, the, all the different parts of the test. You know, the reading and the written language and the math and things, and you know they, you know they they have po uh, at least something of that effect uh, within each of those. Uh, science and social studies has, has been, um, well science has been more, uh, has been beefed up and, and some of that is to uh, replicate what uh, the ACT has to some extent, but it's not its own standalone section, instead it's been integrated into the different, um, the, three, the three different sections. Uh, social studies, you know, they tried to um, amp up their, uh, their uh, that as well in, in sort of passages in which they have and, and trying to implement uh, conversations that are more current and things in which students of today would have more or more familiar with. Uh, also founding documents in great global conversations so they're trying to um, introduce things that uh, you know you know that are happening globally and, and topics from that matter um, you know, something that is on a more of a larger scale. And then lastly, no more answer choice penalties. So that's been eliminated as in the past, you would be uh, penalized a quarter of a point for answering something incorrectly. And that is no longer the case and you and are, well, strongly encouraged to not leave any answer choices blank. Um, <clears throat> so a few more changes within that. Um, the reading, there's no more sentence completions and things, so you don't have to really focus on the, the most obscure vocabulary. Um, the passages with more relevant topics, things in which, um, um, with relevant topics that are related to students and things in which they can understand. Uh, math has been, you know, more topics focused on uh, advanced concepts. Uh, almost mimicking to the level degree that is being asked of in the ACT in some ways. Um, however, there is a less emphasis on geometry, which I stated earlier, where um, you know, unfortunately you have to know all these varied variety of concepts, but there's going to be only a select few that are tested and, and you don't know which one is be tested. So you kind of have to learn it all. So um, it's just a, a fact of the matter. And then there's now a calculator and a non-calculator section. So um, you know, with a non-calculator section is more testing your knowledge of the theory of things and how well you can manipulate equations. Um, the writing is no longer standalone or not isolated questions in, a set in themselves, but instead they've been integrated into the passages. The writing is almost identical to what you'd see um, in the ACT. And as I mentioned, there's the essay is optional. There's um, 50 minutes instead of 25, so you're certainly given a lot more time to read and script out and outline. Um, your essay and then being able to write that essay. Um, but and in another big change too, it's no longer asked to pick a side, but instead explain how the author builds an argument to persuade uh, an argument, persuade people. So that is a, um, a skill in itself that many students um, may have some struggles with and it's not something that's asked a lot of them, um, but it, it can be uh, certainly students can prepare for that and, and by understanding the sort of changes or the sort of things in which they're looking for in the text, um, you can uh, script that out quite well and work towards that. <coughs> a couple other things in regards to this, there's now four choices instead of five, so that's a big difference if you happen to guess. Now you have a 25% chance of getting it correctly instead of a 20% chance. Um, and other things as well as the scoring range, the PSAT, um, you know, 60 to 240, uh, which they still give a national merit scholarship qualifying test score that you may make and things um, that's still in that range, the 660 to 240. Um, but they also give a score that would translate to the, uh, the new SAT, you know, and, and taking that, and that's between a 320 and a 1520. Um, uh, the SAT uh, in the past, in looking at that test, where there were three sections and someone may score as low as 600 to as much as a 2400 now has been reduced back down to the 1600 scale. And with that, you know, looking at uh, anywhere from a 400 to a 1600. <coughs> 
So uh, here's some things in the structural format. Um, you can see the old SAT had 10 sections and now the new one has five, which I think that's a good change. A lot of times in the old SAT, things were moving so swiftly and that you were having to change from reading to math to writing and having to switch gears. And for some students, that was pretty difficult um, in, in trying to manage that change. Now that you're in one section and only one section and taking it once, you can really work yourself into a, um, into a groove and, and help you um, focus on that content only. Math, as you can see, went from three sections to a total of uh, 54 questions. Now there's two sections, one with calculator, one, um, one without calculator, and there's a total of 58 questions. Writing two sections, and, and that's been um, time and of, you can see now there's a 35 minute uh, uh, section of that with a total of 44 questions, and you can see um, you know, with that, the essay required and things. There's a 25 minute section, and then there's an optional one with the new SAT. The other thing about the old SAT was there was one experimental section, so one that you would always take and it wouldn't count for anything. You had no idea um, as to which one that was either. And then the new SAT, um, there are no zero, there are zero experimental uh, sections. So um, with that, you can expect that everything you're doing counts and not have to worry about something not counting. <clears throat> so when you get your new um, SAT score and things, you can kind of see it being administered in this way. And it, as you got your total score that's being done here, and then you have your section scores, which are evidence-based evidence -based reading and writing and things, and then you've got your math that stands alone. Um, in these, you'll see that there are um, the sub-scores that will go from 10 to 40 um, that you could have. And uh, with these subscores, you know, it kind of tells you how well you're progressing along in these individual areas and things. Um, you also have your cross-test scores, which again is a 10 to 40. And these, these parts that are embedded into it, as I spoke about, that are in, in each individual um, section type, the, the science, and then you also have the history and social studies. So it's kind of testing this as well. Honestly, I don't know how colleges will use this. Um, uh, maybe some could potentially use the science score, but I don't really see that, um, you know, being used all that often. I mean, honestly, the ACT has something similar to this, and many colleges don't really even uh, look at these individual subsection scores. And then there's these subscores that they've given you on a scale of 1 to 15, and it's um, measuring your competency within all these different skill levels and content, and it can tell you how well you... Um, that you're performing within these individual sections. And this is just additional information to help us um, focus on certain areas and trying to help to um, target our, um, our advancements and improving um, your competencies in certain areas. So the new SAT scoring, there's no penalty for guessing, as I mentioned. There's also subscores and cross-test scores and things. Um, along with it, there's score reports, and these are online. Um, for which you can download as a PDF after you've received them from College Board. Um, additionally, as well as the peer comparison of things, um, you can see how you've done compared to those who've taken the SAT test, and you can also see how well you measure against peers, or how well they are projecting how well you, you measure against your peers nationally. That includes ones that you have not taken the test to. And then essay response marks, so something that you'll uh, you receive that you have not in the past is um, the things in which they've done to score your essay and then being able to see the marks that the, uh, the scores have given you and how you can further improve um, for further uh, additional tests. So quickly here, um, the PSAT or what they also call the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. Um, the PSAT is administered uh, as well as like uh, you know ninth, tenth graders, and, and the National Merit Qualifying Test is administered as eleventh grader and things. It's supposed to be a preview and a practice to the SAT skills, also to kind of give you an understanding of how well you're progressing along and things. Um, the big one is the one you take in eleventh grade because that's the one where you're being screened for national scholarships. It's also administered in October of each year. So the format to that, as you can see, is quite a bit shorter than what it is for the SAT, where the reading is 60 minutes, where that's traditionally, um, you know, what they have is 65 minutes. The math, you only have one section of math that's 70 minutes long and things, and you can see how much time is being allotted there for each question, which is really good. Uh, the writing and, and the language is uh, 35 minutes, 
and that's pretty similar to about what's being asked of you nowadays. So it's a total of 165 minutes, uh, a little over, uh, just about, I guess, what, uh, two and a half hours of things. And so a little bit different and not as strenuous as the real SAT, which is closer to four hours. Also for PSAT scholarships, you can see um, national merit is for students, or all students are eligible. And the index score for the state of Texas, because it's based on the top half percent um, within the state is about 217 um, on a 240 scale or about a 1450 out of 1600 on the uh, on the SAT and things. Uh, national achievement, this is for African Americans or black students. You can see the score that they're needed is about a 194 out of 240 or about a 1350 um, out of uh, 1600 on the SAT and this is uh, for all the top one percent and things. And the National Hispanic um, those students, you know, it, uh, some sort of Hispanic Latino origin that they have, I think it's at least one quarter, and the score is approximately about a 182 for, this, for the southwest region that we're in, or 1320 on the SAT. Um, they also have to couple that with a GPA that's above a 3.5, I think, so the percentile rank for those scores, for this, is about top 5%. So, well, um, you also can do a student search service that you can opt into when you're registering for these tests and it kind of helps you or it gives your information out to other entities to be able to contact you that you may be a good fit whether it's for different programs different scholarships or things um, other partners as you can see the list here um, that are uh, use this information and to help recruit students into these programs and these are all excellent ones especially Jack Kent Cook uh, United Negro College Fund um, these are ones that are fairly uh, lucrative and, and can be um, national scholarships that can um, certainly make a difference and impact on your financial situation. So lastly, pacing strategies in which we have. Um, the one thing to remember about the questions um, for the test is that they're all equal. Not one is worth more than the other thing. So, you know, you may find yourself spending an inordinate amount of time on a particular question and they're kind of spinning your wheels. Well, that question is worth no more than the next question that's after it or the question that was before it and things. So if you need to, just pick, select your best choice answer, mark it on, on your test that you did that, and then if you have time, come back and review it. The thing about the, um, the math is kind of like climbing a hill. The math progressively gets more difficult as you move through the section. So. Um, you can expect like the first five problems to be for pretty easily and then the next five will get a little bit more difficult and so forth and so forth and things. Um, so within that test you should be hopefully moving a little bit quicker through the first half of it and then the, having a little bit more than half the time remaining on the last half of it and things. Um, eliminate as many as you can so being able to look at answer choices and some of the things in which we'll talk about through the curriculum is uh, understanding the answer choices and how to sort of safely um, eliminate some of them uh, by knowing the type of answer that you should be providing and then if, if you're able to then choose the best answer afterwards and things to help and to increase your odds so um, if you're able to safely eliminate one then you've increased your odds by 25 percent to answer correctly if you don't know it at all and things. If you don't have an understanding of what you're looking at or what it may be, just pick an answer choice, you know, skip it and move on from there and then, like I said, mark it up and then return if you have a chance to come back. The other thing is, is, um, is, is crazy it seems, is that you do want to progress in a manner that is at your own pace and what you feel comfortable with and stuff. Um, a lot of students think they have to, have to rush through this it's better that you take your time and answer the questions in which you know correctly and things and then in the end if you have to sort of um, maybe uh, progress a little bit quicker than you're comfortable doing you can do that um, and then in the end you know you can just pick choices and move on and things um, but however the idea behind this is as you become more familiar with the test the pace of which you move at should pick up so it's better in the beginning to tack things a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more carefully within that. And then by taking and being more careful, um, you know that you're going about it in the right procedure, the right way, and that you're implementing um, a certain strategies within yourself 
that will help you to uh, learn what you're doing and then you can easily re repeat that. So as you become more and more comfortable, the repetition of that will get quicker and quicker for you. So. <clears throat> well, that's the end of our presentation. Um, thank you very much and uh, certainly as we begin moving forward with the class and introducing actual subject content and, and curriculum for you to learn, but this is to kind of help to orient you to the test, better understand its formatting, the scoring of it, and um, also as well as some strategies that will help to get you going and um, moving forward. So thank you very much and have a great day.